Right, all right. Yep. All right. What's good, everybody? It's your man, Big Dog, coming live at you with the True Players Podcast, episode number 33 on the docket. We're going to be recap um, Game of Thrones season eight, episode number five. Um, a lot of you guys will watch the episode. I don't want to know how you guys feel about it. We're on Instagram Live also, so definitely hit me up on um, Instagram Live. Head up my, my guest host. We got a guest host, Joey G, from Joey G Radio. I promise you guys that he's going to join me on the battle for King's Landing. And he's on. We we on it. We're doing the show on Instagram Live as well as on um, Anchor Radio and also Spreaker Radio. All right, Joe, let me tell you something. When I seen that episode, I start off when they um, – when Varys, it started off with Varys trying to um, send notes to the lords, the right. ravens, saying that John is the true heir to the throne because he believed that he was the rightful ruler of the kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Um, as he was um, trying to write, one of the one of these little little birds, a little girl came through and was like, um, um, they, they were watching me and this and things like that. And he was like, yeah, who was watching you? It's like, the, sho- the soldiers was watching me. I said, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. Trying to mm-hmm. reassure her that um, that they're just doing their job. But deep down, he knew they were watching her because he was the, she was one of his little birds, and the soldiers was definitely watching her because she was they knew she was a little bird for Varys, knowing that he was going to be going to betray Daenerys. Uh, we mentioned the last episode when she was planning to attack King's Landing. He told her is the he told her straight out it wasn't a good idea. Right, hold off. And um, don't attack King's Landing. Mm-hmm. You know, after she lost Masande, the way she lost Masande, and the way she lost Rhaegal, it, it, it was too much for her to even overcome to think rationally. You feel right. me? So she goes on, and um, you see Grey. Once I seen Grey Worm come in with the chains, I know they got Varys. I know they got Varys. Yeah. Before that happened, um, you, if you remember, um. Tyrion goes to the uh, the room where the, the throne is in Dragonstone, where Daenerys was, right? And she was like, "Oh, John betrayed me." And Tyrion's like, "No, it was Varys." I don't know if it was Tyrion dry snitching on Varys, or she already knew it was De- Varys. She just wants something to, co- to confirm that. But um, Daenerys seemed in the beginning want to point at. Um, John as a betrayer and Sansa as a betrayer because she wanted him to keep the truth from Sansa and his family. John yeah. being John, John being the honorable guy he is, he's not going to do that. No, he's not going to tell that. my family. Yeah. yeah, yeah tell my was... family. So they know what's up. Mm-hmm. Um, so. That's how Edgar would handle it. Anyway, Edgar Stark, uh, uh, Ned Stark mm-hmm. would have, um, he would want to handle that. That in that manner, right? If there was any business to be told, I got to tell the family because it's going to affect not just me but everybody in the family, right? And being that he felt that close to them, he felt he owed it to them to tell him. Mm. It's a truth that they they were living with that he didn't. Well, he he didn't recognize until after he found out, pretty much, right? So. But um, from that point, I thought she was. Uh, I thought you know, all things considered, I thought she was going to um, bring John in mm-hmm. for the uh, execution or whatever she was going to do with him. But he comes into the uh, to the room, the private room with Grayrum was there with his queen, you know, and Grayrum mm-hmm. was looking at John type funny, and Daenerys said it was cool. He's cool. Let him come and talk. Then she reiterated to him about how come you told Sansa? You know Sansa was going to try to find a way to uh, put you on the throne or try to deceit because she doesn't like me and things like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, listen. Um, John's going to do what he wants to do for his for the best for his people. Right. That's his responsibility. The North is still his responsibility by the end of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? So she got upset about it. Then she came, they, they chained up Varys and then they brought him to uh, be executed by mm-hmm. fire, by, uh, right. um, by Drogon. But I don't know if you noticed in the episode that, um, did you notice that when she said Dracarys, did you just notice a little hesitation from Drogon? Yeah. Drogon wanted to see what, what, 
what he was doing it or who he was doing it to. Right. And he, he looked in, he looked Varys in his eyes. Um, I want to say, yes, there was a hesitation. It was like, should I do this? Would you be betray? Um, maybe, maybe he was thinking, well, I don't think this is the right move. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I felt there was a hesitation before he actually listened to the execution of the, what Daenerys said. Right. So she saw, I think, I think more than him. So he wanted to, I guess he wanted to, I, my opinion was, I thought he wanted to get the John's order to, to, to kill Varys. Yeah. It, it could have been that too, because, um, during the time that John has been, uh, close to the dragons mm -hmm. or, uh, it seems like they have gotten a bond. Right. So he's considered one of the family. Mm-hmm. So I think his 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 opinion is weighed weighed in on everything now. So now it's not just Daenerys's opinion; it's John's also. Right, right. I feel you on that. And they also said something about the um the animals, something to do with the Starks and the animals that they have. Them touching um the animals, it links them together. Mm-hmm. Something to do with the blood magic and all of that extra stuff. So in that, there there's a bond there. It's not it's not um he's a dragon and I'm John. It's not mm -hmm. like that. It's like we're connected in a different way. Right. Well we we know each other's kinda we know each other's thoughts. It would be kinda like brand on a different level though. They're out on a lower level. Right. Right. I definitely hear you on that. De definitely hear you on that. But by the same token, um, now they, they get ready for the battle, the battle at um, King's Landing. And um, you see Euron um, waiting for the dragon, waiting for the dragon. But you know, Daenerys is smaller than that. She knew that she was she was waiting for them. He was Euron was waiting for them with the scorpions and all that stuff. So it can't. It, it, she was ready to the burn him to the ground, and she came in and burned all his ships down. And it, it was like it was like it was like nothing to her. No matter how many scorpions they had, they all missed Drogon. They came in with a mission to create havoc, burn, yes. burn the burn the ships down. And all that stuff. Now, this masterful plan that she executed, mm -hmm. coming back, coming, coming against the Iron Fleet first, mm -hmm. um, and at a low, low altitude where she wasn't touched. Where yeah. was that when she had two dragons? I believe she was. I believe she was ambushed. I I believe she was cocky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that too. She was she was cocky and she was arrogant about the whole thing. So in that, they just they humbled her. Yes. And let me take that away from you because yeah. you you feel like you 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 on top of the world right now. Let me knock you down a pedestal and see see where you at. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you know, you know, like I said in the previous podcast, um, I did an episode previously. I said Daenerys. Ha, you know, if you notice, Daenerys has no sense of strategy. Mm -mm. She believes in using her dragons, bring everything down. Right. Cersei is strategic. Yeah. Sansa is strategic. Yes. Yes, she may have dragons, but that doesn't fear those particular women because they have a strategy for everything. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, as a leader, you should be able to have a sense of strategy. Mm -hmm. You can't have your hand tearing to, to dictate the strategy for you. Right. All, all, all the time. You got to have a set strategy because you have dragons. Right. You have an advantage and you're not, utilize, you're not utilizing the advantage to the, to utilize, utilizing the advantage, the advantage to your liking because you lost two dragons. Right. Those two dragons because you were foolish and arrogant. Right. She took down the, the scorpions. She took, took down the scorpions on top all, that was all over King's Landing. Smart moves. I mean, everything she did was smart. But right. I felt that it came with the edge of, 
I'm going to do Maximum Carnage. Yeah, I think it, it was getting there. It was just the show. Uh, she wasn't done yet. And right. I think that's what, um, what's her name? Damn it. Cersei. Cersei. I, <laughs> I think Cersei, in her mind, was like, you bring your dragons, I'm going to kill them, and then what do you have? Because you don't really have an army. You're right. So she, she was really counting on her armies to defeat that. And right. like you said, the Scorpions, to do that. The Iron Fleet, she was counting on the Iron Fleet. She's right. like, what? We still got the Iron Fleet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> And mind you, before we go, before we go, before I'm gonna head back, we, she did capture yeah. Jamie Lannister before they went down to um, to King's Landing, and, and Tyrion, Tyrion set him free. Um, Tyrion yeah. set him free because I thought he wanted to return a favor favor to the time that when Tyrion was in prison, getting ready to have be, uh, put to death, Jamie came and saved him, and um, and let him let him free, and that's what that's what he killed Tyrion Lannister when Tyrion killed Tyrion Lannister, right. and I felt I, Tyrion was caught in a bad place because he he wanted to put, I believe he wanted to protect Varys, but most importantly he wanted to protect Jon. That's True. why that's why he ratted Varys out. That's why truly he wanted to protect Jon because he deep down he knows Jon is the is the, should be the right ruler for King's Landing, should be the right ruler for the Seven Kingdoms, and okay. he felt he had to protect him. That's right. why he sold out Varys. And, and I believe Varys, we're going back, you know, a little bit. I believe that's why I believe Varys, you know, understood what, what he was, what Tyrion did. Mm-hmm. He un- Actually, Varys always had a plan from the beginning. If you go all the way back, he, he had a plan. His plan was to put somebody on the Iron Throne that was for the people. He right. wanted the people to be protected. So any move that he made strategically, uh, conniving or whatever schemes mm-hmm. he devised, yeah. it was for that sole purpose. Right. I, I believe um, Tyrion also is in that manner. He's not as conniving. He's more strategic in mm-hmm. his plans to execute the same notion. He's for the people. Right. He's seen, he's seen tyrants. His father was a tyrant. Mm-hmm. Um, his father was a tyrant. Yes, he was uh, a very militant leader, right. but he saw the flaws of that. He mm-hmm. needs. He wanted somebody to be in the throne. Mm-hmm. What Daenerys was in the beginning, compassionate, yep. the breaker of chains. Right. <laughs> he saw somebody compassionate to put in the throne, so he backed that. Like I can, I can get behind that if right. that's where we're going. Right. But to go against that and start to veer towards the Mad King, or right. <laughs> another Lannister right. on the throne is just like, nah, I'm not with that. Nah. I don't blame him either. I don't blame him either. And, um, you know, he said, you know, before Varys was burnt to burn alive, you know, it, 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 he said, um, goodbye, old friend, you know, just, yeah. and Tyrion felt bad. He, I mean, he felt bad, but, you know, the greater good is make sure Jon stays alive. But they understood that. That's the pact that they made, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe it was when she first got to Westeros. Mm-hmm. And when they were in the, I want to say the throne room. They were in the throne room and throne they were talking room. amongst. They were talking amongst themselves, mm-hmm. and that was the their plan. Mm-hmm. They wanted to be clear of each other's plan, and I believe it was after Varys was threatened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you betray me, I'm killing you. Right. By Daenerys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he devised, from that point on, he was on a soul mission. Right. And I believe after he was told by uh, the the Red Witch. Right. After he was ta- talked to by the Red Witch saying that she was, both of them were going to see their death in the north. Right. When he was told that, then he was ser- he was seriously on a mission. Right. Right, right, right. And the mission was to uh, make sure he gets the right person on that throne. Right. Even if, even if, even if he has to die to do that, he was that was his mission to do that. Right. And um, well, who who knows whether or not he'll succeed? At, finally, succeed after his death. He probably won't see it. He said he did say he may not see it, see it, but his hope was that it will happen. Right. So now 
we go to the tell, let me tell you something. What do you think about this whole hoopla about the Golden Company, right? All this hoopla <laughs> about the Golden Company is this, the Golden Company is that, this, that, and the other. And the truth be told, they only lasted five seconds. You know what? When I seen the Golden Company, the first thing I thought of was Shrek. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking of Prince Charming <laughs> when they when they introduced Prince Charming. And he just wanted to be like a whiny <laughs> mm-hmm. uh just pretty a, mom, a mama's boy. That's all I saw when I seen <laughs> the Golden Company, the dude sitting on the white horse. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, and when they were wiped out, right? I was just like, that. that's it? Like, that's, that's, it. <laughs> that's, that's even, how easy it was. They didn't even get a move in. They didn't move nothing. Nope. They just turned around. It was done. <laughs> All is the like I said, they overblowing a lot of people. Gold company, this gold company, that they're gonna they're gonna tear, they're gonna kick ass. Man, them dudes is running from a dragon. They got burned by a dragon, and homeboy, the whole called the leader Strickland, was running away from the uh, the onslaught of the Dothraki and the Unsullied. Yeah. But for some reason, um, during that episode, did, did it magically appear that the Unsullied was like full, almost at like full army, and so was the Dothraki? It looked like it was a, a pretty. A thick cord, yeah, mm-hmm. it did. It, it, from from the battle uh, of the night, from mm-hmm. the battle of the night, um, I thought there were less. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I thought there was less. I didn't realize that there was still that amount mm-hmm. of uh, Darthraki. I know there was a lot of Darthraki, but I didn't realize there was that much left. Yeah, because the way they made it seem in in the uh, the battle after the battle, it was like most of them died. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, That's crazy. And uh, yeah, that that was pretty much it as far as that's concerned. Because we're not talking about the wildlings. Wildlings, wildlings went back up north. So, right. and um, I believe Sunsa. And uh, is being protected by the veil. Uh, the veil, yeah. Mm-hmm. The veil and Brienne. So they're Brienne not. They, 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 didn't, they didn't come down. It looked like the most the Stark army came, army came down with John. Yeah. And whatever was left of the of the Mandalays, the Umbers, and the House Glover, they all came down right. with with John. Right. Um, but the thing is that also, you see, Jamie sneaks into the crowd of King's Landing. To try to, to try to save Cersei, you see the Hound and um, Arya <laughs> in the, amongst the crowd, also trying to get to Cersei. Also, everybody trying to get to Cersei. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it was kind of it was kind of unique that Jamie would risk risk his life, yeah. to uh, to get to Cersei. But one thing I want to I want to ask you something that that kind of bothered me about the whole situation was the um, the devaluing of of Davos. Okay. Throughout the throughout the season, isn't he John's right hand man? John's hand, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah. Why was why is Davos being minimized to just someone just and just back to what he was a smuggler? Right. You know, Tyrion asked him to set up a boat so Cersei and Jamie could escape to Pentos. Right. And Davos like I'm, I'm not going to like that. The one biggest mistake I have was. With John is if you're gonna tell someone your truth of your true identity once you got it from Sam, it shouldn't be his family that he should have told first. He should have told his hand, Davos, right? To have an idea, have a, have a, have a strategy on how to tell to people without with you without you coming across as you try to take the throne, right? So if Davos was the one who said it, then I don't think the next would have been as threatened. Has she? Has she? Since she heard it from Tyrion or Varys or from Sansa, uh, I I kind of agree with you, but at the same part, in Daenerys's mind, it's a threat to the throne. Right. It's a threat to her throne, and she's been counting on this since um, we go back to the Dothraki. Uh, <laughs> since the, since the Dothraki promised it that we were going to go across, since Drogo. Drogo told him, we're going across the sea, we're going to conquer, we're going to take the throne, we're going right. to get all that. Exactly, exactly. 
uh, since he since he promised that, I think she was on a mission. That was what was going to happen, regardless. Because exactly. so, all those people that died would be in vain. Right. If she doesn't get the throne in the end, all of that, all the people that died, that's weighing on her. Mm-hmm. All the people that died along the way to get to that throne, if she doesn't have the throne at the end of that, right? That she promised her people, the Dothraki. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, the Dothraki are like, "Yo, you promised us this." Right. Why don't we have that? Like, what's going on? Exactly. <laughs> we followed you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So let's let's get back to the actual battle. The battle ensued. That they got in. They got to the. They breached King's Landing. They're in King's Landing. John is leading the way. With, well, actually, in the way, John is like, okay, I'm, I'm going to stand by and see what's going on here. Um. Then it got to the point they were starting to kill people around them, and then they encountered the large Lannister army waiting for right. them <clears throat> at the little corner and stuff like that. And the Lannister army knew when they were defeated that all right, we were we're beat. The dragon is burning the freaking city down. They're all about. They're not all about trying to protect their family and their citizens. So the best way to, to protect in their eyes was to protect their citizens since they were done was to drop their weapons and surrender. Also, what what are we gonna fight for? We have we have strength in numbers. Right. If we know we're in a losing situation, why go to battle and lose all these good men? Right. Why? Right. Uh, in the end, we don't have a queen that we really want to back anyway. Right. <laughs> Had it been the father, had it been the father, I think they would have did it. Right. One, one out of fear and two out of respect. Right. Because in the end of it, he has something for them. He right. has an incentive yeah. for them. Right. She doesn't have that. No, no, no. She just you she, fighting she, or you dying. <laughs> exactly. She she she. Cersei. The problem is with these these queens are were were not loved. They were feared. And right. when you, you're seeing that, you're going to see that with Daenerys also with the Dothraki as well as um, the Unsullied also. They fear her. But my problem is is that Jaime, um, the reason why Tyrion let Jamie go in the first place was to make sure he gets to the bell so he can ring that bell for surrender. Right, for the Jaime, people. For the people. Jamie didn't get there in time. He was, he, his whole purpose was to get to Cersei and protect her. But the problem is I have with this is that this is where Daenerys was totally wrong. This is where Grey Worm was totally wrong. I thought Grey Worm tur- tur- pulled a, a bitch move. First of all, pulled a bitch move. I don't give a f- I don't give a damn if you if you harbor going you over your girl that got her head chopped off. You should have done a better job protecting her while she was on that boat. Okay. Truth be told, if you love her that much, you protect her while she was on that boat with you. Make sure you she make sure you hold her and her and her hand send her sending send her off to get captured. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you saw the Lannister army drop their swords. You think the battle's over. All right. They won. People are still alive. Arya and Ar- Arya and, and the Hound are still walking calmly through the King's Landing. Jamie's trying to get to Cersei calmly. The bells are ringing, mm. and all of a sudden, Daenerys had this look on her face. She was like, "Can't support when you heard when you heard the bell ringing and ringing and ringing." She's like, "Fuck it, burn the city." She went full maximum carnage, and from that point, from that point, Grey Worm took his cue, took his spear, and threw it in the back. I don't know if he threw it in the back of the um, Lannister army of the soldier there that dropped his sword or he threw it while he turned around. Well, whatever it is, you don't strike a man when he dropped his weapon. Nah, that's, that's, it's not an honorable thing to do. And I don't feel like there was a need for it. Right. I don't feel there was a need. Everything, everything that happened after that point was excessive. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it was done. It, it was totally done. And you saw, you notice John looking around. Like what the, f- you know, he's like, wait a second, I didn't sign up for this. Mm-mm. You seeing people getting burned, people, the, the citizens of Kingland running around, getting That's burned, 
that's that's something that John could not back. He could not back, and he didn't know how to handle that. We're talking right. about innocent people. At this point, these are not um, enemies. These are innocent people that are dying because they already surrendered. Right. He's been through different wars where it's like, okay, I have to get through this, but I think this is totally different. This is emotional right. on top of. <laughs> but you, you know, notice, notice one thing that we, that we forget during the um, during this. John was in the Night's Watch. Thank you. John was raised as a Stark. Careful. He was he, he was there to protect the realms of men, not to yeah, murder them. The, right, the realms of men. Yeah, not to murder them. So basically, he just went against his vows by watching this happen. Right. And um, Davos, even Davos, was like, "What? Wait a second here." And you notice when John was trying to hold off his men because mm-hmm. they turned savage too. Yeah. You shot a hold of his man. You saw Grey Worm looking at John like, what are you doing? You you should be loyal to our queen. This is where the disconnect is between John yeah. and the Unsullied and the Dothraki. Mm-hmm. John lives by a code. Protect the realms of men. Yes. By those values, John is a free man. But what the Dothraki did and what, what Grey Worm specifically did was acted like slaves. True. That, yes, slaves rebelling. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. They acted like slaves rebelling. Right. Against the tyrant. Right. Well, actually, they didn't. They, they weren't rebelling, but they weren't rebelling against the tyrant. They were, they were, rebe- they were acting as slaves on behalf of the new, the new tyrant. Which is Daenerys. <laughs> oh, in this case, yes. In this case. So, and what Daenerys effectively did, this is this is where she became strategic too, unbeknownst to her. By her doing that, committing all those, killing all those innocent people, John was with her, technically with her through that whole thing. Think about his reputation being tarnished. So, um, on the subliminal level. Remember when she tried to get? Remember when she was trying to get some 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 dick from John? John said, "Am I going to be loved?" She said to John, "If I'm going to be, am I going to be loved or be feared?" And when John didn't want to give her that dick, she's like, "Fuck it, I want to be. I want to be feared." I think the well, we'll get into that later. But um, yeah. Ari is going to have a different um, outlook on that, and she's going to have some contributing words as far as that's concerned if John's reputation is in question. Right. right. I, don't know, I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know if I would call it contributing words or contributing uh, Valeria Stan Steel Dagger. But <laughs> 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 because um, in, in, in that instance, you notice um, when, when she, when Daenerys is laying, like putting fire throughout the King's Landing, you notice Arya is trying to duck from the duck, duck it from fire. Yeah, Doug for she. How many times do you think she almost died in that in that whole scene? The four or five, four or five, I could count. And she almost she almost did not make it. No, she didn't. And for once, she 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 reminded me of the Arya Stark before she became a faceless man, the caring, loving girl, right? The young woman that she was, right? But once the carnage was over. And he, she saw all the dead bodies on the ground, all the ashes, the carcasses, the skeletons. Mm-hmm. She became, if you look at her, the way she looked at Daenerys, if if you if you see the the um future episode, she's going to be a straight up downright faceless man. Remember the remember the prophecy Melisandre told um, Arya. Mm-hmm. The eyes that you're going to put to sleep. You're going to put to sleep brown eyes, blue eyes, and green eyes. Mm-hmm. There was only two women left left alive who had green eyes. Cersei mm-hmm. and Daenerys. Mm-hmm. Cersei, for all intents and purposes, died under that rubble beneath the keep with Jamie. Right. Right. So who's left? Daenerys. So, 
we're gonna talk about it a little bit later in the episode. We're gonna we're gonna talk about we now we're gonna talk about the, the 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 only thing in the episode that made a whole lot of sense for me. Okay. I don't know if you probably agree with me. Was yeah. Cook, was Cook Game Bowl? Yeah, made a whole <laughs> lot of sense to me. Made a whole yeah. lot of sense to me. And it's funny. I started trying to so Gregor, this is your queen. Or Kyber was like, this is your queen. <laughs> Kyber got his ass killed for that bullshit because Gregor was like, yo, fuck you. Fuck you. I'm going to kill this nigga right in front of me. Right. And the so-called Queen's guard, the dudes in the black, was no match uh, for the hound. No. Nah. No match for the hound. No. Nah. Excuse me. I don't even know why they tested him, though. Mm. They, they're cut from the same cloth, though. The mountain... <laughs> And and him a cut from the same cloth. So you really think you're going to get at him? <laughs> no. Not at all. And them dudes got killed swiftly and, and, and swiftly, and they were done. But the funny part was you saw Cersei kindly excuse herself from the battle. She's like, <laughs> she's like oh, shit. Um, guess she's not listening to me. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nah, going to excuse myself and- from this shit. In both their instances, like either one of them could have killed her at that moment. There was nothing she could do about it. Exactly. There's but, nothing mm. she could like. We we both could kill you right now. Like, exactly. Get the hell on. <laughs> exactly. Go on about your business and let us handle our our business. Exactly. But they weren't about I, that, that. I thought that was a very funny moment. Um, mm-hmm. Awkward for her, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But you know they weren't about that. They're about that battle. You notice know, um, the hound was trying to stab the mountain. He was like, "What the fuck? You're not dying. I'm stabbing you straight in your stomach, straight through. You just sit there and pull the the blade out from your gut. You still going?" And when I when I saw that mountain grab um, the hound by the head, he started squeezing his head again like he did to Oberyn. He did hurt out. He he did pull out one eye, but you know Kagan was able was able to open up his his right eye. And then also he became Goldberg and tried to sp- spear the mountain right through the damn wall. And they fell right into the fire mm-hmm. together, which is kind of um, poetic justice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because um, be- because when 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 um, the Hound was playing with Kagan's toy, he put him as he shoved him into the fire, mm-hmm. and this is poetic justice. Um, the Hound pushes the mountain into the fire. They both die together. Yeah. He, he, I, I think that's one of the reasons why he feared the fire so much. Right. He knew that was his end. Yeah. It was his beginning and it was his end. <laughs> right. Right. I totally agree with you on that. But the, what the beautiful thing is, the, 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 also the story between him and Arya, the Hound and Arya came to it. Turn came to a poetic ending, a perfect, uh, perfect and poetic ending. He became a father figure to her. At the end, he's like, "Listen, you can't go where I'm about to go. If you go where I'm about to go, you're gonna die." And right. so many words say he doesn't want that for her. Right. This is not your, basically. This is not your destiny. This is not your road. This is my road. You need right. to go on your and do what you're supposed to do. Right. And without without saying so many words, yes, he did care for her. He. He grew to love her uh, along the way. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, yes, he was annoyed because, it, it, he, like anything, he didn't like people being too close to him. Right. But at the right. same part, he liked her enough to keep her close to him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the thing was, and then when she, when they finally separated for the very last time, Ara told told him, "Sandor, thank you." Now the crazy part is that's the first time I heard his his name. Yeah, in the show, I was like Sandor. I I haven't heard that name through throughout the season. Exactly. Seasons. I'm like, wow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it, it 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 was it was um bittersweet. I kind of figured the end was coming for him, the way she said his name and all that stuff. And then she goes and goes about the way she now her role now is to protect the people, get the people into safety. During the carnage that Daenerys is doing, mm-hmm. burning people, burning kids alive, and stuff like that, it was even a point that one of the one of the soldiers from the north was going to take a woman and rape her. Yeah, and John was like, "What that's, the hell are you doing? You'll stop." That's, that's too much. Like, we're not here for that. 
That's right. that extra stuff that John didn't want to be a part of. Right. I never wanted to be a part of that. I don't think anybody in the family, as far as that was concerned, ever right. was on that level. Like, we we came to battle, we, we win the battle, and we move on. We don't do stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. So, and he killed, ended up killing the guy for that. So we'll yeah. see what happens if his, if his troops will survive with him after that. Because when, well, you go, when you go against, but truth be told, I know you've been in the military, so you know. Once you go against your commanding commanding officer's commanding officer's order, you're gonna die. Right. Yeah. I I think it was a it was an executive decision on his part to to make that happen. Um, I don't have no problem with that. I feel yeah. like if we're we're in the bat if we're battling, we should still have some type of integrity, especially if you're under me. Right. If you're under me, you represent me. So by you doing that. That tarnishes me. Right. I'm not going to have that. That's Absolutely not going to be on my conscience. I think Ed, uh, Ned Stark would have did the same thing. Exactly. Except he would have chopped his head off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. With, with, what was that? That blade that he had? Ice. <laughs> the Valerian Steel Ice. He called it ice. Yeah. Big ass blade. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how he swung that blade, though, to be honest with you, but. It was a big ass blade. That's as big as he was. <laughs> <sighs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But now we go to go to Arya. Arya's arc of this particular battle. She's trying to save. There was times I thought Arya was the first time I seen Arya then when she was laying in the in the pile of dust all over her. I thought they, I thought she was done. She was done I, for. I I was not. Um, I don't think she, I don't feel like that's the way she was going to go out. And all of that, all that she's been through from the beginning till now, I don't see that as her being her end. And after we see the battle of uh, with the hound and the mountain, right? I don't think that's her ending. Like it has to be some type of epic battle, yes, or an epic ending, and concluded with you just being in a pile of ashes. That's stupid. Yes. yes. <laughs> Especially we, after you got you got past the um the um the long night. Yes. You got past the long night only for that to happen? Nah. That was, while that was, it was but while I was emotionally involved, I'm like, no, it can't be like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the same part of like and there was an underlying in me that was just like, nah, that's not nah. the way you're gonna go out. <laughs> no, nah, not not at all. Not at all. And I'm I'm glad she didn't go out that way, but she she saw she saw what she did was she cared for a woman and her child and a child she tried to whisk him off to safety and eventually they got burned by Drogon right while trying to save trying to get trying to get her up mm-hmm. and that from that point on Arya was like what the what the fuck is this and everything she said in the Godswood when they were talking when John Sansa and Arya and Bran were talking. They all said they don't trust Daenerys. Mm-hmm. And um, when it's all said and done, you see John walking around, John and Davos walking around, seeing the pile of ashes, the shock on their face. So Tyrion walking around, seeing, seeing the uh, ashes on the floor, the people being burned. He was shocked too. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't. It's like they didn't want to, they, 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 yes, Cersei had to be removed, but they, they didn't want Cersei to be removed like that. Right. Granted, let's go back to a little mini battle, you know, between um before we end the podcast and stuff like that. And before we and actually not end the podcast, we can go up to the next segment for the next episode where we view things. Um the little mini battle between Euron and um Jamie, I'm gonna tell you straight up, straight up bro, that battle was under was underwhelming. It was a waste of time. Okay. It was a waste of that. time. Because it wasn't the right, it wasn't the right person to battle Euron. No, no. But Euron wanted a piece of that, though. Yeah, Euron wanted a piece of that. Um, I, I like, I like the fact that um, he lost. <laughs> oh, he, he's going to lose. So he's going. He, but he he lost a one-handed um 
Jamie Lannister. Lannister. But truth be told, if Jamie was holding, that wouldn't have been would not even been a battle. No, it wouldn't have been a battle. He knows it. Deep down he knows it. He had to know that. Jamie was one of the top swordsmen in the freaking freaking um realm. Next but after it, he was he was on a level of Arthur was him, Sir Arthur Dane. <laughs> but the 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 crazy part to me is that he was fighting with somebody with an iron hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, are you really stupid? Stupid you as don't all think, can be. You don't think that he would use that hand? Like, he's thinking a regular battle. Okay, it's me and you. I got this. You got that. He's not counting on that. He got slapped up by that hand a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> and then while he's dying, he's like, I'm going to kill Jamie Lannister. You didn't kill Jamie Lannister. The rubble falling on top of his head killed Jamie Lannister. Right. You could tell yourself that if you want to. Right. That's not what happened, bro. No. I mean, and his biggest mistake was actually letting him crawl. Yeah. His biggest mistake is thinking he was done. Right. No, you should have seen it. You should have looked him in the eye like our Aya did a couple times, different people along <laughs> along the way, looked him in his eyes, stabbed him in the face, and then walk away from him. That's exactly. what you should have done. But exactly. You chose to do another cocky move, yep. like we've seen earlier in the Game of Thrones seasons, where they're sitting there like, I won, and this, that, and the third, and then you wind up dying. Stupid. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that's another stupid, stupid thing, but he he, just, he got what he deserved, even though I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought he should have been, should have came from either Theon or Yara, which has been conspicuous, conspicuously absent throughout the season. Yeah, but she said she was going back to the Iron Islands to build a fleet. Right. She was getting more people. Right. That was her her main mission is to do that. So when she comes back, she's gonna have a full fleet. Right, but you but you know damn much she, she's gonna hear what happened at King's Landing. Yeah, she's gonna hear, but now who does she back in that situation? I'm guessing she's gonna back the Starks because he felt that close to them. And he's considered a brother in their eyes, right? But she also, I agree with you on that end. But I also agree with the other the other spectrum. She may support Daenerys because remember, the Starks did kill two two of her other brothers, mm-hmm. and all three of her brothers died in the Starks' war. But they kept them alive. They kept Theon alive, right? They never they never harmed Theon, and even through Theon's betrayal, mm-hmm. they still considered him a brother. Exactly. They were mad at him, but they still considered him a brother. Right. I I don't I don't know how Aya felt about him, but I know that Sansa, John, uh-huh. they already they put that to rest. You are a brother. You are you are a part of this house. Exactly. So yeah, well, like I said, we'll see what happens. Um, as we um, like I said, Davos and Tyrion, they're going through the rubble. Um, I sense I sense a lot of sadness amongst the four of them: Arya, Davos, John, Tyrion. A level yeah. of sadness. Yeah, this is, is this we, this is not how we wanted it. Exactly. That, that that's like that's a major battle in itself. That the after the long night after the long night battle. Now we go into this battle. Okay, mm-hmm. it's over. This is not the way we wanted it. Right. This is not the way we wanted it. We wanted that person. That was it. Right. You kill the innocent people. What's not, what? So Daenerys, yeah, Daenerys kills all these people. What? What? Who's she ruling now? Just the Thraki and Unsully? Now, the, the crazy part is, if we go back, I want to say that the Red Keep was a part of the family, if I'm right. not mistaken. The it was Targaryen a part family. of the, the Targaryen family. So it was a reminder of mm-hmm. the Mad King. Exactly. It was also a reminder of the Mad King, so her burning it down was a new era. Right. Also a new era. Like, I'm burning this whole city down. We're doing something new. I'm the queen. That that could be also another way to look at the situation on top yeah. of all the other um, the extras that we put in there. But that's the way I looked at it as far as that was concerned. The Red Keep was a um, a haunting reminder of the past also. Right. 
I definitely, I definitely hear you. I definitely understand what you're saying about that. And um, it, it's a hard thing in the past, but then again, she says she's trying to break the wheel. And all she did, her technique, her strategy, was continuing the wheel of tyrants. If she, if she really wants to break the wheel, then let John sit on the throne, or let the next person in line sit on the throne. That's going to be for the people. That's how you do that. Exactly. Succeed. Exactly. Succeed. But you know, we're gonna now we're gonna we're gonna st- we're gonna stop talking about the episode right now, if you don't mind, and uh, we're gonna go into the next uh, the preview of the next episode here. Okay. Um, like I said, after the ashes. What what do you think is going to happen next episode? From the oh. tri- the, the little little preview we got after the after the episode. Honestly, I didn't really watch the the preview because I was still reeling over the um uh, <laughs> the episode. Right. Um, I was still reeling over the episode, and I didn't really see too much of it. I think yeah. I saw bits. Uh, there has to be a closure. This this. This episode is going to be about closure, so we're going to set things to an end. We're going right. to find out who who's going to be on the throne. We're going to see who's going to be uh, left alive after, right. after the aftermath, because it seems like Daenerys is hell-bent on being the queen on the throne. Right. Um, John, Tyrion... Um, and a couple others are going to see, they want to see the right person on the throne. So, um, that's, that's the internal battle right there. Right. But while, the, while Daenerys still has the dragon and Unsali and the Dothraki, what le- what's left of the Dothraki, I don't know, with the armies that they have, they're evenly matched if we really look at it. Right. They're evenly matched. Um, the dragon, I don't feel like the dragon's going to be a part of this this next um, this next episode, the last and final. Uh, I think it's going to be a battle of the north and uh, um, Daenerys. Because mm-hmm. Sunst is still there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brianna Tar is there. Yes, and she's probably going to hear a new word of Jamie's demise. <laughs> exactly, uh, she was. So, she's going to want revenge. I said, "Half half no no fear than woman scorn." Yep, and we see a lot of scorn women in the past few episodes. But yeah. the, the problem is, this is the key thing to the next episode: is the response from Sansa, knowing that this everything went down in King's Landing. I truly believe when they met in the Godswood, when we didn't see what we didn't see on camera, they had a state. They, I believe, John, Santa, Bran, and Arya had a plan in place just in case the Daenerys goes mad. Mm-hmm. Just in, just in place, mm-hmm. and Daenerys, I believe, underestimates the power of Sansa. Yes, she's she's gotten very strong from the beginning till now and i believe it's through all the things that she's been through right the whole uh, her, her snapping point where she really took took off was after she um put the dude to rest with the with the dogs exactly ramsey bolton yeah and ramsey I, bolton and i believe next episode is it's going to come to the head it's going to come to the head john versus gray worm Well, Grey Worm is going to die as far as he's going to be wanting to go with his beloved. She's already gone. Right. Are you going to you going to back Daenerys? Okay. Then you die. <laughs> right. I, he's formidable, but he's flawed. He's, he's, on, he's, he's on John's level, though. He's formidable, but he's he's broken. At this point, he's broken. So I'm not I'm not counting on that battle too hard. Right, I like to do. Yeah, <laughs> but, I like you know, to do, but at the same time, I still like John more because of his. He's honorable. Right, he's honorable. Honor. John's been. John was pretty much put as a slave. Also, right. 
He comes from the same background, kind of. Mm-hmm. He was treated like a slave. <laughs> exactly. The he was treated like a yeah. He was treated like a slave, so he understands that whole thing. So, in the end of it, you're gonna have two people battling. One, one has nothing to live for. Right. The other one has a purpose. Right. His purpose is to rule the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? True, whether whether we speak on it or not, he's his his, his job is to rule. King's Landing. That's what he was groomed for under the right tutelage. I believe Rhaegar had a had a, had a plan in case he were to die. The two men that should be raising his either Arthur Dane or a dead sock. Mm-hmm. You know, Daenerys speaks about how her brother was loved. He was loved by the people because he did for the people. Mm-hmm. But a lot of a lot of lords at the time did not understand what he was trying to do. They called him a rapist. They called him a, Tar- right. a, a damn dragon, a Targaryen. They always fixated on Targaryen this, Targaryen that. But right. he, what he was trying to do is gain, gain, gain enough steam to overthrow his father. Mm-hmm. You know, if it wasn't Robert's Rebellion, it was definitely was going to be Rhaegar's Rebellion. True. And I tell you the truth, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be much of a war. Now, how how much you want to bet that Rhaegar placed Jamie there to kill his father? <laughs> Think about it for a second. We we all know if you look if you if you heard any of the episodes, uh, I know you read you heard the episodes and stuff like that. Jamie was right by the king's side at the orders of Rhaegar. So Daenerys, Daenerys can be mad at oh, oh Jamie that oh Jamie's she mad at Jamie because Jamie killed her father this that and the other when when she had him imprisoned, but long story short, it was your older brother that set that up, All right? Because he didn't want people burning. He didn't want the whole city to burn. All right. He want people to live and live, be happy. Rhaegar was a great warrior, just like John. He was a great warrior, but he he didn't like it. He didn't like the war. So did John. John don't like to go to war. Mm-hmm. But yes, it's a, it's a means. Right. So my, my opinion is that in the, in the next next episode, Daenerys is going to die. Nah, I, feel, I feel like that. It all now depends. How, it all how depends. Is, is the question? Is it going to be by Arya's? Or by Arya's hand or by John's hand? That's the key. Yeah, because I believe that that's gonna say I'm gonna go after Sansa now. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how I feel that. But like I like I said, I I remember I wrote something. To, I wrote something in a group for about about John. The difference between John Snow and um, Daenerys. Daenerys is feared by her people. She yes, she broke chains. She broke chains to gain an army. She didn't yeah. break chains because she wanted people to be free. No, if that was the case. Those people at King's Landing would have been alive, right? And she's and and being the the breaker of chains mm-hmm. and going through that yeah. whole that whole process. At some point, you're gonna you're gonna gain that feeling of power, right? Invincibility, right? In that now, <laughs> having that on you for so long, mm-hmm. you're gonna become arrogant, right? You're gonna become a Cersei, right? With the feeling of I'm doing this for a righteous cause, right? If you look at it, Cersei was doing it for a righteous cause in her own eyes too, right? So was other kings and queens at the time, <laughs> exactly. We all have our purpose on why we want to do everything, but bottom line, do you have a moral core? Right. The moral core does a the moral the moral compass, if you will, the the moral compass in the whole situation. At the end of the day, does it put you on the throne? And can people look at you and be like, "I I back that king a hundred percent, that queen a hundred percent." True. That that's what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. 
that's what it boils down to. At the end of the day, we want to see somebody on the throne that's for the people, caring, compassionate for the people, and we can live in peace and harmony. Right. And we're protected. Exactly. We don't have to worry about you. We just have to worry about outside <laughs> inevitability. <That's right>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the most most important thing, again, her arrogance. Yeah. When she, if she does, if they do go take the episode to the point that she's going to battle the stalks up north, she's going to lose because you know why? The most powerful being in the realm is a stalk. Mm -hmm. Bran could take over the dragon at any point. At any point. If it, if it comes down to it, Bran could take over the dragon. What you going to do then? <laughs> He showed it. He doesn't have to. He, he could take over people. He could take it over animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bran is the most underestimated person in King's Landing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And he's going to do that because he, whatever feelings he has left is for John. Mm -hmm. It's in there. It's a. It's a mixture. It's a yeah. mixture. Now, now I go back to saying about that whole blood magic thing for mm -hmm. every animal that he's been in contact with, especially the wolves. He has a pack mentality. Right. He's going to protect his family first. Right. <laughs> he's no longer just Bran Stark. That's what people keep forgetting. He's not no longer just Bran Stark. He is the, the three-eyed raven. He is the wolf. Right. <laughs> he is. Exactly. Um... He he's a mixture of all of that. With that, he's a mix of all of them with Bran Stark in the middle of that. Right. And the yeah. sea of the the past and the future. Right. <laughs> Definitely agree with you. Definitely agree with you on that. And um, that's something that it should strike fear to Daenerys' heart. Yeah. Because he he once he walks in, he once he walks into Drogon, bye bye Unsullied, bye bye Dothraki. Now, where's your army now? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you, and you, got, a, you got a woman, a, a girl, who went through trials and tribulations. Worse right. than Daenerys. Worse than Daenerys. Mm -hmm. Trials and tribulations. She learned from the best people, the most vindictive people, the most conniving people. Mm -hmm. She learned from Cersei. Mm -hmm. She learned from Olena, Olena Tyrell. Yes. Which told be cautious. Exactly. Be cautious. Be calculating. <laughs> exactly. She learned from Ramsey Bolton. Right. Sometimes you have to strike fear. Exactly. Most importantly, she learned from the one man. That was guiding her throughout her whole travel since she was a little girl. Little finger. Yeah. Daenerys is Daenerys is no match for her. No. Not on a not on a um technical on a no. technical level. And not, and and not only that, she doesn't have she doesn't have a brother who's a three eyed raven. No. We go back to that. <laughs> we go back to that too. <laughs> That's true. That's straight truth. So, why don't she just give the throne to John so she could live and her people could live? She care about her people. Quote right. unquote. I don't she care at this point. I don't think she cares. I think she cares more about the throne than anything else at this point. Let me tell you. What, are, what is what's the what is what's the good of a throne if you don't have the people to back you? Give Facts. it a throne. Facts. Give it a throne. Facts. She wants a throne. Give it. Give it a throne. Facts. What are you gonna do when you have no people to back you? You're gonna have the Dothraki. That's it. You're in the same place that you were, except you're on the other side of the water. <laughs> exactly. If you notice something, you know something in in, in the be in the beginning when she saw when in, in after the after the aftermath of Battle Winterfell, you saw the the guys was um Tormund was wax poetic about John, about how he was right. I see him right a freaking dragon. Only a madman or a king could ride a fucking dragon. <laughs> they saw everybody just coming to John. He's a fucking king. He made he made friends with the enemy and died for it. 
Yeah. And you know, Varys is there listening to the whole situation. Like Varys, like yo, this is the this is just the truth. The people right. love the people love John. They don't fear him. Not for nothing, in, in that situation, we go back to olden times. A woman were not looked at as being a part of the throne. Right. If we want to get, if we want to get into that whole extra part of the point of view, is like we're not looking at you as a person that should be on the throne. Right. It's for the men. <laughs> but the Joe, listen, you're, 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 you're piss off, you're gonna piss off a few women watching this two, this two place podcast, no. man. No, I, <laughs> I can understand their frustration and everything like that, but it's it's a part of that time in history uh, right. we can't look past that that's that's the chauvinistic part of the male history back then and it's still true to this day anyway right. <laughs> right. anyway now i no, i got a couple people on there that were telling me along the let me let me put this in there right i got a lot i got a lot of people that were telling me along the way that we have the females in place that helped john get to the point that he was before the battle the uh, battle of the long night Yes. We have Aya doing her thing. We have Daenerys doing her thing. We have um, Sansa doing her thing. Right. Uh, Brienne of Tar doing her thing. I mean, yes, these people were key into putting people in the positions that they were in. Especially John. Right. Especially John along the way. So now we get into the position where John is getting more praise at this time because he's looked at as a person that should be on the throne. Right. Not to say not to say that Daenerys doesn't have a claim to it also, but we're looking at a man that went to battle that right. we know he survived and he did it for the people. Right. Daenerys didn't do that until she was on the field <laughs> in the long night. Right. But she was protecting one person. <laughs> Herself. Herself. And the person she was trying to protect at the same time that was protecting her. Right. Right. That was it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the thing the thing the thing is too is um like 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 he's a war John's a war hero. He died for his people. He bent the knee to protect his people. Right. Now she says she loved John, right? Right? When Leanna when Leanna Morma was giving the giving him the business <laughs> in in that in that in that meeting room. Right. If you truly if you truly love a man, mm-hmm. you know, let's say I have my girl, yeah, I bet the need to her, I said, Yeah, she's the queen. But the same face of to the same face, if she loved me, she would save face to my people and say, He didn't bend the knee, he's still the king of the north. Ah, uh, you went out. I went back. We're back. Yeah. If you truly love me as your as a guy that you as a man that you love, you would say face in front of my people and say, "No, nah, he's still your king of the north." Right. Throw a little white lie in there. Right. Don't sit there and be like, "I'm still the queen." Right. That's that's all she wanted to hear. Right. What is the title? What is the title? <laughs> what no. is the title? You all you die the same way, man. You live and die the same way. She's so hell bent on this title. I don't I don't I don't get that part of it. Mm-hmm. I don't get all the battles that you've been through and everything like that. I don't understand just having a title. John at this point was like, I don't want a title. He had a title when he was on the wall. Right. <laughs> he didn't want it then. <laughs> nah. He just wanted to live. He just wanted to live. Yeah. And protect I, the people. Yeah, that's about it. Live and protect the people and stuff like that. So that that's pretty much that's who John is, man. And John now John's gonna be in the middle of let's see how this episode plays out. Because you know what it is too? We had a lot of twists we had a lot of twists and turns throughout this season. Yeah. Um I what I wanna say before our, our grand podcast um after the season's over, because you know there is another episode after the next one. Which is going to be done a few weeks later, if you if you didn't see the um, the preview for that, um, I just I just wish the writers took took more time to put this together. And I just felt you, you've been on high eighties for two years. Have us have your biggest fans wait. We wait for you to have to drop this season. 
you give us six episodes with with which all intents and purposes was, was rushed. Mm. All intents and purposes, it was rushed. I mean, they were great episodes, but they were rushed. You know, so like I said, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I don't want to talk about that now. I want to get ready for that big podcast that me, me and you are going to have after the mm-hmm. se- after the series is over. Okay. And um, hopefully, I'm going to have more people joining us on the podcast. Also, also other, some other guest hosts who are big avid Game of Thrones fans. Some of them you seen okay. through my um, my messenger yesterday. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get them involved, get them on a Zoom, and we going to make make it on and popping on that podcast after the whole series is over. I, I, I came in on the tail end of that conversation yesterday. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, I do have an uh, a alternate theory. I have an alternate theory that I, I'll, I'll expose once we have that, that final one. I have an right. alternate theory on the whole thing. Right. Um, <laughs> and I want to say brand is the key to that. Brand is going to wind up being the key to that past, present, right. future, and right. that's all I'm going to say about it right now. Right. I'm going to look into it a little bit more. I guess get a little bit more research into that part, but I'll leave y'all with that. <laughs> Definitely, I can't. I can't wait. I, I can't wait for that episode. To be honest with you, I can't wait for that episode. And another thing, another thing too. Before before we end the podcast on this note, um, I'm just going. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going I'm to give you a preview who I believe is going to be the winner of the Game of Thrones. It will be Sansa Stark. Okay, Lady Sansa. Sansa Stark will be the queen of Westeros. She will be the queen of the queen of the Seven Kingdoms. I believe that. Not because John dies. I think John's going to give her the title. He's going to assume. I think this is how things going to play out. He's going to assume the title of king, mm-hmm. then give to Sansa while he goes up north with Tormund and the and the Wildlings and live his live his final days. Do you think Tyrion will be either at her side, or do you think Tyrion is going to be uh, marry Sansa? I be- I believe if he doesn't get killed, yeah, he will be Sansa's um, husband again. So that would make him king. Yeah, of the North <laughs> and where and the was, Seven Kingdoms, where he was promised by his father. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Not just the north of the seven kingdoms. Right, of the seven kingdoms. It was promised that the north was promised to him. To him. Yep. By his father. Yep. It would go back to that. <laughs> and then finally, finally, you will have a Stark in the Iron Throne. Right. Finally. It should have been Ned that it should have been Ned that took the Iron Throne when that rebellion happened. It should have. It should have. Um Ned didn't make the right moves fast enough. Right. He didn't make the right moves fast enough. Had he had done that and had some um, contingency plans put in there, he would have been fine. Right. Varys was willing to help him. Exactly. But he wasn't willing to sacrifice himself at that time. No. At that time. Now now that the game is is almost concluded, he right. he he put his life on the line to set that plan in motion for John. Mm-hmm. But one question to you, one question to you before we, before oh, end up. Or for a start. <laughs> yeah. For a start. Cause you gotta put, you gotta, you gotta put that alternate end in there. You put in there earlier. <laughs> yes. For a start. But one question to you is mm-hmm. why didn't, when, when, when Robert was killed or died, right. he, we all know he was killed anyway. Ned was King Regent. Right. According to the order of Robert Baratheon. Why at then at that time did did why at not at that point in time did Ned not put John in as the heir to the throne at that time? Um because he knew the truth. Because Cersei, he knew Cersei was gonna kill him. Mm. Okay. He knew Cersei was going to kill him because she knew of a child. Yeah. She knew of a child, another Targaryen. She knew of it, but she didn't know who it was. Right. Now, that that was the whole thing there. When Robert was alive, he was like, I'm going to kill all of them. Right. He was concerned. 
he was concerned about Daenerys because he found out the, the the queen of the dragons. Yeah. He found out about her, but at the same part, he didn't know about Jon. Exactly. So, now that was the biggest secret that um, Ned Stark kept from him. Right. <laughs> this is my boy. This, we we went to battle together and everything like that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now he he did tell John. He told John when you come back from the when I when I uh, come back from this because he was going where he's uh, supposed the, to be the, uh, the the hand right hand the hand. Mm-hmm. When I come back, that's when he was supposed to tell him. Mm-hmm. I believe if he told him after that while he was on the wall, they would have found a way to get him out of there. Yeah, but. It was in his best interest to send him there as protection for John. Right. <laughs> like I, I, I went back to to think about his strategic move, and it was just like it made sense. I'm going to send him to no man's land where he should be protected. Exactly. Nobody knows he's there. It's it's a place for outcasts and everything like that. Nobody has to watch over him and know why he's there. Right. He's just there and. I'll come back to him later and I'll let him know. Yes. When the time is right. (laughs) Good answer. Good answer. I I like that. I like that answer. But definitely, bro, we're going to end the podcast at at this this juncture. It was a great podcast, definitely. Um, We're going to do this again, hopefully. We're going to do it next week when we do a recap of the final season, the final episode of the season with you there. And and plan on other things as well. Once again, people, you could definitely um, listen to my podcast on um, Anchor, Spotify Radio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, um, Breaker Podcast as well. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up on TruePlayersPodcast at gmail.com, which is T-R-U-P-L-A-Y-A-Z at gmail.com and also you definitely hear hear this episode on Joey G Radio once we get up and once Joey's back up definitely definitely hear you on that hopefully um, we get more co-hosts on the show and um, like I said just hit me up like my page True Players Podcast Facebook page like that page (laughs) you know what I'm saying so on that note Joey you want to sign off Uh, it's Joey G with Joey G Radio has been fun. Can't wait to do the next one. Look us up on Facebook, Joey G Radio. Yep. And um, yep. we're coming soon. We're doing a revamp of the radio station, and I'll be having it out to you really soon. Mm-hmm. Until next time, looking looking forward to the next episode and Definitely. giving you some more, more insight on the Game of Thrones before, with the conclusion. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Until next time, we'll leave you with that for now. All right, cool, cool. All right, people, this is your man, Big Don, for True Place Podcast. We're signing off. I'll catch you later. Peace. Peace.